All right, so we're pretty much like 90% of the way there in having a pretty reasonable CRUD API. However, remember that in our service, we added some logic here of if a ninja was not found, it throws an error. So let's take a look at how nest behaves when we get into that situation. So we'll do a get on slash ninjas, and then we'll provide it with you know, a number that clearly is not in our collection of ninjas with the ID, correct? So hit send there, and you'll see that we've got an internal server error. And the reason that happened is because, again, we threw this error. So imagine that that bubbles up to our get one ninja controller method here. But then from there, Nest doesn't know what to do with that error. So then it kind of assumes that this is a server error. We're going to respond with a status 500. Now, what would be great is if we were able to perhaps return with a 404 response. The way to achieve that is using the built-in exception classes in Nest.js. So let's wrap this in a try catch, right? So we'll try to perform this get, but we'll also catch the error if something happens with that get. So in the catch here, what we're going to do is we're going to throw another error, a specific error, the not found exception from Nest.js. So we're effectively just mapping the error that we have here in our service to a not found exception. And let's take a look at how that behaves. When we do the request again in this non-existing ID, earlier remember that we got back a 500 response. This time, we're going to get a 404 response. It says that status code 404, message not found. So Nest has a bunch of these built-in classes. If you take a look at the exception filters documentation, you'll see that there's built-in HTTP exceptions. Uh, you know, so they have all the typical ones that you probably would need. So for example, bad request, that's a 400, right? Uh, they have stuff for auth. So if you need like a 401 or a 403, that's usually, you know, either the unauthorized or the forbidden exception we just saw using the not found exception, right? And there's a bunch of others here that, uh, you know, represents other typical statuses that you might return. You know, even the teapot exception is in here if you want to use that. Right. So the thing to understand here is that uh, Nest.js has these things built in. If you throw those specifically, it automatically knows to respond in a certain way. Now, you might be wondering, why don't we just throw the not found exception in here, which you could. Uh, but the thing I was trying to point out here is typically imagine that you're talking to a database, right? You have some kind of database driver. That driver is probably going to throw in its own special a database not found, record not found error, right? So typically you won't see the, the exception, the HTTP exception being thrown here. It'll probably be the underlying services that's throwing a specific error, which you might want to catch in the controller. For example, maybe you want to do some kind of if error instance of, you know, DB exception. And then based on what that caught error is, it's up to you to then rethrow a specific exception from Nest.js to respond in a certain way. Now, in some cases, you might want to create, you know, your own exception classes. You can create your own custom ones. You can extend existing exceptions, or you can use the base HTTP exception and extend it. Or you can even use one of those standard exceptions and pass in a custom message if you want. So in our case, we might change it to something like uh, ninja not found, right? So you might be wondering, how does Nest know to respond with the correct status code based on the uh, classes that you're throwing? Basically, in Nest, there is a concept of exception filters, which are responsible for, you know, effectively catching any exceptions that were not caught by your own code. And the default exception filter that Nest has is set up so that it's meant to uh, specifically catch each of these exceptions that are built in and it determines what the status code to respond with. Now you can fully customize how this exception filter behaves. So for example, like we said, maybe you have a database driver that throws a very specific exception when it can't find a record in the database. In that case, you might want to set up an exception filter that automatically catches that specific exception and responds with a 404. That way you don't have to explicitly keep catching it like the way we're doing it over here, right? That would be kind of annoying to constantly rethrow a not found exception. So know that there is a, a possibility to extend and customize this behavior. 
that's a little bit more advanced so we're not going to cover that in detail here uh, but i wanted to mention it anyways so that's pretty much exception handling in a nutshell in SGS.